Hey guys, this is Josh from Josh Builds, and I'm going to be showing you how to make a wearable hydraulic crusher. So to start off the video, we're going to have to cut a few things out of wood. So first I'm going to start by measuring all the pieces we're going to need up. Once I've drawn out all the pieces we need, we can go over all the pieces and then I'm going to cut them out with this reciprocating saw. Next I'm going to sand all the pieces down, they're going to have some edges on them and we want them to fit together nicely, so I just sand all of them down. Next I'm going to position the pieces on top of each other and line them up and I'm going to mark where I want some holes to be. Now in these holes we're going to put dowels through them, so you want to drill them to the same size as the dowel, so the dowel fits snugly in those holes. The rotating piece, we're only, we only need to put one hole in there because that piece is going to rotate. And then we're also going to need to put a few more holes in these pieces of wood uh, for dowels that are going to uh, be the structural components. You want to put those far enough apart where you'll be able to fit your wrist through them. Now we can cut the dowel up into pieces and we can get all our pieces of dowel and start to dry fit our components to see how it's going to fit together. And as you can see, that rotates very nicely. So now I'm going to get some two-part epoxy and mix it up. And I'm not going to show you all the mixing because it's a lot of epoxy I use. But basically, anything I have to glue together, I use epoxy for. Now we can put the bottom piece on. We'll glue all the other dowels in. And then you want to just put lots of epoxy on any of the stationary pieces so that it's structurally very sound. Now the rotating pieces, we'll, we'll double layer them up just to add some strength and epoxy them together. And then now I decide to use hot glue because this is more aesthetic and, and not, you know, it doesn't need to be as load bearing and as strong. So I'll use hot glue for the stuff that's not as important. As you can see, it rotates pretty nicely. And I'm also going to epoxy a few wooden blocks under both sides of it, just to uh, add some strength, and then we can seal it all off with a, uh, another sheet of plywood. And now we can put the other side on and see how it works. And as you can see, that rotates very nicely. So next we're going to have to put in the hydraulic parts of this. And so I'm going to build something to mount the syringes on, just so the syringes will be slightly angled upwards. And then we're also going to have to create a few pieces and drill holes in them. And those are going to be mounted on the ends of the syringes. Now we can mount the syringes and they want, you want them to be slightly angled upwards. And I'll put all those in and use epoxy to hold them in place. And then now we can make sure they line up and make sure you can get a dowel through all the syringes. It'll take a bit of work lining them up, but hopefully it lines up perfectly. And as you can see, that works pretty well. Now the syringes don't have much holding them in, so I'm going to epoxy a few pieces of wood in there and it's gonna be glued to the beneath the syringes and then it's going to be glued to the syringes just so that adds some structure to the syringes so they don't move around too much. Now I get, have these one-way valves and I'm going to use one of the one-way valves, cut it open and just use it as a splitter so, so we can split one tube up into three tubes 
and I will attach that to the syringe. Now the reason we do this is because it gives us a mechanical advantage. When we have one syringe, one small syringe pumping water into three large syringes, it basically gives us a nine to one mechanical advantage because when we move that small syringe a little bit of distance, the large syringes will move a ninth of that distance, but with nine times as much force. So now I'm going to get the one-way valves. I'm going to add one one-way valve in the side of a small syringe, and I'm going to add another one-way valve at the end of the small syringe. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to allow us to pump water. When we pull back, the water comes out of one one-way valve, and then when we push, the water comes out of the other one-way valve. And now I'm going to get one other syringe, and we're going to seal it off. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to act like a spring. So the, we're going to connect both of them together. And because one of them is completely sealed off, when we push it forward, it creates some pressure uh, because it's still sealed off and that air pressure pushes the other syringe back into its original position. Now we can mount this little pumping mechanism that we just created. And you should make sure to mount it in a place where you'll be able to access it with your fingers from the inside. And as you can see, when we push it in, it bounces right back to the original position. Next, we're going to need to make something to store the water. For this, I just found a, um, a rectangular plastic container and cut a hole in it. And then I'll add a little lid in that as well. And for the lid, we'll just use the lid of a water bottle. We can use some epoxy to glue it right onto the top. And well now we'll need a tube going right from there to our little pump syringe that we created. So basically when the small syringe moves outwards, it draws water from the reservoir we created and then when we push it in, it pushes the water uh, from the syringe into the three larger syringes. And now we can fill our reservoir up and add some food color. And now our project is complete. So now we can put some things in it and see what we can crush. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure to give me a like and a subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. And feel free to check out all the other cool videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.